Yeah, okay. Like, you're not stalking me. It's so wild that we randomly visited every gym at the same time, bro. I'm on to you. I can't believe you, Mango. You don't have to go find randos to battle. You have all the battles you ever need with me. Bro, sad. You made, you made, you made, you made the Yandere side come out, bro. You will be my right. <laughs> Oops, couldn't hear you. I'll say it again. Let's you and me be best rivals for life. Uh, my conclusion. Uh, she's a Yandere who's very, 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 very fixated on you. Is Nimona from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet a Yandere? No. She isn't. I'll explain why. So in 2022, Nintendo released Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And with the reception of, uh... Not so great reviews from the start of the release, but over time it got better, and there's a lot of shenanigans going on in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet when it was first released, but we're not going to talk about it right now because we are talking about a character that a lot of people in the Pokemon community and the Yandere community have noticed, and that is Nimona. You might be asking, who is Nimona? And why are you making this video in 2023? I'm going to explain it in a few minutes, but I'm just going to say right now that this video can take spoilers. So if you want to play Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, you're going to have to play it yourself. But if you want to just watch the video and see me ramble on for a few more minutes, thank you for watching. <laughs> Anyways, let's get started on who Nimona is. Nimona is a trainer slash champion who loves battling and battling and battling. And that's essentially it. <laughs> Nimona has a personality of being clingy towards the player, and she is shown to be very competitive. That's from what I know in the wiki, of po in Pokemon Wiki. Which is the reason why people keep calling her a Yandere, god damn it. So Nimona in the Pokemon series has been labeled as a Yandere. But I don't know if the person who's labeling Nimona knows what a Yandere is. And to anyone who's watching this video, you need to take off your Yandere glasses. And two, you need G- So let's get started on a Yandere. What is a Yandere? Yandere is basically a combination with Yandere and Dere. Which Yandere means to be sick. And Dere means love struck. Which both of them together creates lovesick. The three main things that Yandere is required to have is one, must be in love with one person, two, she is obsessed with the main person, and three, she has abnormal behavior, or she could have done anything that is pretty weird or considered not normal for normal society. So Nimona is apparently fitting in these categories of being obsessive, being lovestruck, and having abnormal behavior. Now let, let's explain the things that people have been labeling Nimona as, as a Yandere. So in the first part of the game of Scarlet and Violet, you get introduced to Nimona, and she asks if you want to be her friend. If you said no, she feels like she, you know, scared you off, or she came in a little strong, and she needs your dick. <laughs> but the problem is, that's not enough to be Yandere. And she doesn't show any romantic interest at first. And she wasn't like, oh my gosh, look at this pretty trainer. This little tiny trainer that I want to... <laughs> and she didn't get mad at the trainer or you specifically for not being friends with her. So she was a little sad. I mean, she didn't do anything horrific. I mean, she didn't come up to the trainer and start strangling him. The second example is when you battle with grunts. So you apparently have to battle two grunts in the game. And after you defeated them, Nimona shows up and says, What are you doing? You should have been battling with me. I'm the only person you should have battles with. But I think it's just her insecurity and it's just her being jealous. Because, no joke, any person can get jealous. Marin and Komi in the anime got jealous of their love interests talking to other people. I mean, I turned them into a Yandere, but still... <laughs> Nimona didn't show any sorts of love or anything towards the player, which a Yandere is required to be in love. The third example is Nimona stalking you when you enter the gym, or she says, Oh my gosh, it's a coincidence that we met up. Well, it might have just been a coincidence in the first place, and also, Yandere's don't mean stalker. Yanderes don't have to be a stalker, and Yanderes don't need to be violent. A Yandere is required to be in love. The main theme of this video is love. The last example is when you meet up with Nimona, and she asks if you are the champion. If you say no, she'll become persistent, and asks if you are a champion, to the point that it just sounds like she's a robot now. She will then explain that you are now in the same level as her, and you both are now champions, and after that she'll ask if you want to be rivals for life. For life. And if you say no, she will get angry and says, I didn't hear you. You are gonna be my rival, right? If you say no, she's like, okay. We're gonna be rivals, right? No, 
no, no, no. She will then start coming in and saying, you, me, rivals, like a robot. <laughs> but it doesn't mean she is a Yandere because she is persistent, yes. And this could have been classified as a Yandere act. Even though there might be hints that you, she is interested in you, she doesn't show it throughout the story because, because Pokemon doesn't have romance. Except that Serena and Ash anime sing you goddamn idiot. And she's not looking for any sort of relationship. Unless it's friends with benefits. But most importantly, she doesn't show any love or any hints that she's interested in the person. Despite just being friends. Now let's explain Nimona's insecurities. Because Nimona in the story is insecure. And she feels that she's been, you know, pushed down a lot. There is a video out there that explains Nimona's you know, attitude and why she's acting like this and why she's being a little persistent, which uh, there, it's a really good video and a very good explanation on Nimona's character. I'll put it right here, which it specifies that Nimona isn't obsessed with the person and isn't, oh my gosh, she's in love, just insecure and, and she just wants a friend. And people just slap the Yandere label on Nimona without even thinking that she's a Yandere because you gotta think, is she interested in me? Does she want to suck my dick? Well, listen up, um, maybe yes, but, uh, not in this game because it's E-rated for everyone. She's clingy, yes. She's insecure, yes. But she just wants a friend, and it- and there's nothing wrong with that. Genuinely, and she's just insecure. I mean, other people have experienced this too, and they didn't classify them as Yandere. So, why is Nimona special? I have to stop this part of the recording because it was getting pretty late, and it was nighttime, and now it's the next day, so... Let's continue on from what I was saying, shall we? Yay. From what I was saying, I'm just thinking that Nimona shouldn't be treated as a special case of a Yandere because she isn't a Yandere and there's no evidence to support Nimona for being a Yandere. And what, you know, freaks me out a bit is that people are claiming that Nimona is, you know, the high Yandere, like, you know, the Yuno Gasai, Ayase Aragaki, Akane Ahiyama, all those crazy Yanderes. You're gonna have to look at the other Yandere's that have more Yanda tendencies than Nimona. I would say that Pokemon fans and a lot of Yandere fans have claimed Nimona to be a high Yandere, but not looking towards other characters that have Yandere tendencies, and I would say have more than Nimona. I can prove it right now, but first I just want to point out this is another spoiler warning, because I'm going to be spoiling a lot of things. Yay, if you don't want to hear it, skip this part of the video. So let's talk about Amy Rose first. Amy Rose, despite her changing in the new games and in Sonic Boom and everything else, she was really boy crazy for Sonic in like Sonic Adventure, Sonic Heroes. She was crazy for that Sonic ass. Unfortunately, Sonic didn't want anything to do with it, but Sonic wanted to just be friends. But Amy was forcing Sonic to be on a date with her. She would try her best to, you know, force the love out of Sonic. Like, choke him. Not like that, but like, but hit him with a pico pico hammer. Which, he could have been dead at that point. But she would force Sonic to be on a date with her. And she would show a lot of stalkerish behavior and obsessive behavior. And even to the point that she got jealous of Sonic's other, you know, friends. And she would think that they were in some sort of relationship with Sonic. But she did tone down her Yandere tendencies in the new games. What about Wakamo from Blue Archive? She broke out of custody multiple, multiple times on Valentine's Day just because she wants to give a gift to Sensei. But to the cost of multiple, multiple people's confessions and causing destruction in Kivatos. Which the Sensei was not happy about and, she, and he called her out on it. Wakamo didn't really care about anyone's confessions until Sensei brought it up. And Sensei was not really happy about it, which made Wakamo cry. But Sensei ordered Wakamo to tone down her violent tendencies. But she still displays some violent tendencies and Yandere tendencies in her relationship stories. Like wanting to blow up fireworks just because she thinks that it's ruining her time with Sensei. And she would also display some violent behavior and destruction behavior when plans with Sensei don't work out. I mean, I don't mind any of the plans that Wakamo is doing with me. And I have to say, after playing Blue Archive, Wakamo is a much better waifu than Monica. <laughs> I have to say that. <laughs> so the last example I can use is Mazore from Rosario Vampire. But please bear with me because I've only known a little bit of it. I only know a little bit of the anime and the manga, so please bear with me. So from what I've seen, Mazore is extremely clingy towards Sukune from the start. And when she saw Mocha, she got extremely jealous. And she was showing off stalkerish behavior towards Sukune. And when Sukune was about to go back to Mocha, Mizore came in to Mocha and started choking her. 
And when she came back to Sukune, she tried to cave him in ice and say that she is going to keep him forever in ice. That sounds like S death. <laughs> but later on in the story, her Yanda tendency has gone low. And she didn't show that much of, you know, that craziness from the start. And she cut her hair. She did show some a little bit of weirdness in her attitude. I mean, she's a kudere. A very awkward one, but she's a kudere now. Used to be a yandere. But we're not gonna forget about the part when she was about to choke out Mocha. We're not gonna forget about that. So what do all of these characters I've listed have in common? Well, they are in love, most importantly, because... Nomona hasn't shown any love. Well, she did show a lot of friendship and friendliness. But she didn't show any sort of hint that she's romantically interested with the main player. And you might be saying, how does this have to do with Nomona? Well, despite the characters that I listed having low Yandere tendencies, or their Yandere tendencies are not as much as Yunukasai, or not even as much as the mid-level Yandere's, or their Yandere tendencies have lowered down over time, they still are classified more of a Yandere than Nomona, to the point that I could just name them and give them the title Yandere, because they have more Yandere tendencies than Nomona ever has in the game. You might say that she has stalkerish behavior, she is very clingy, very pushy, and obsessive, but that could have just been her insecurity, and any other Dede can do that. A Dede Dede can do that, a Sun Dede can do that, and most importantly, a Yan Dede can do that, but a Yan Dede has to be in love, something more than stalking, just something more than that, like kidnapping, which I haven't seen the Mona done it because Pokemon's E rated. <laughs> Pokemon's an E rated game, so I doubt that the developers of Pokemon will ever do it. <laughs> But in the end of the day, this is just my opinion and my analysis of Nimona. And before anyone leaves in the comments saying I'm a Nimona hater and I'm a hater of Pokemon, I do not hate Pokemon and I do not hate Nimona. And generally, I appreciate Nimona's character because she's a relatable character because all of us have that sort of, you know, clinginess or that part of us that just wants to be accepted for who we are. And Nimona just wants a friend that accepts her and just wants to be part of our lives. That's why I like Nimona as a character. And also, this video is not meant to shame anyone who thinks Nimona is a Yandere. And this video is not meant to stop anyone from posting Nimona fan art. Because I want everyone to continue making Nimona fan art of her being a Yandere. Because I've done it before. I turned Komi and Marn into Yandere on this channel. And making Yandere interpretations of characters, it's a fun thing to do. And I encourage people to just turn Nimona into a Yandere and encourage what you can make her more of a Yandere. Like her stocky tendencies go way, way worse. Like it, to the point that it actually becomes way more concerning to the point she might have just kidnapped you. But generally, Nimona deserves the Yandere title, but we need to find ways to make it because Nintendo's not going to do it. I guess we're going to do it. And there's going to be a lot of fan art and there's a lot of fan fiction of Nimona out there of her turning Yandere. And I appreciate a lot of it. And like I said, I do not shame anyone who turns people into Yanderes. And I do not want anyone to stop making Yandere fan art. I like seeing Yandere fan art. And generally, I would like to review it on my channel too. Yeah, keep it up. That's what I want to say. Keep up with the fan art. Keep up with the, you know, Yandere demand. Because we need more Yanderes. We need to make this really... We need Yanderes to be mainstream again. Make Yanderes great again. But just don't turn Donald Trump into a Yandere please. So that's essentially my opinion on the video. You don't have to listen to my opinion, but Nimona deserves the Yandere title. And if Nintendo's not going to do it, we're going to do it. So yeah, that's essentially my thoughts on this video. <sighs> I sound like a hypocrite in this video just because I turned Komi into a Yandere and now people are going to start hating in the comments saying that I suck balls. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it.